there everyone welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. I hope you've been well since the last time we saw each other. Well today I'm going to be doing yet another starburst painting. I know I've done a couple in recent weeks but I'm on a bit of a roll with those and there's a few ideas I had floating in my head that I wanted to get out of my head before I went on to something new. So forgive me today. Well it is going to be a sort of actual starbursty painting today because I'm using all sun bright sun colors today. I'll show you them in a bit. Now a little while ago I did a painting and it was a mess and I scraped it off so I'm using that canvas again today. I just waited till it dried properly and then it's ready to go again. Hence the, the interesting pattern on them. All right now I pre-painted the edges. Oh it is a, a 50 by 60 centimeter thin edge canvas by the way. But anyway I painted the edges um, red. You can use any color you like but I tend to pick the darker color that I'm using in my painting. Um, I pre-paint them because this technique doesn't always guarantee the paint will go over all the corners and sides when you blow it out and it's much easier painting the edges before you do your painting than trying to touch up the little white bits after you've done your painting and it's dry. So I, it's not something I usually do but I do for this technique. So this is the canvas today. Now the paints I'm using today are mostly Amsterdam, but I'm just using up a couple of other thing colors as well. So I'm using Amsterdam, what's this one? Naphthol Deep Red. As you can see, very sunny colors. This one's primary yellow. This one, Azo Orange. Now I had a little bit of um, gold left over from Montmartre that I used in another painting. So I'm using the Montmartre gold in the center. Now I know Montmartre and Amsterdam, they do react with each other um, when you use them together and you get sort of wild lacing effects. Um, but I don't think it'll be an issue today because I'm sort of keeping them relatively separate in the painting. I'm just using this in the center and the other colors around around the outside. Now my pouring medium today is Australian Floetrol. Now if you've got a nicely pigmented paint like Amsterdam, you can just use that paint and water. It works perfectly well. But because I pay, this paint's expensive here in Australia, Floetrol just makes it go a little bit further. So I mix it one to one paint and Floetrol and then I add enough water to get the consistency that I like. I'll show you that in a bit. All right, now I'm using some uh, metallics as well today. I'm using DecoArt Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold, and I'm using their sterling silver. They create sort of lovely effects in the painting. I really like using these ones. So they're the paints I'm using today. I used um, about 45 grams of each color of the Amsterdam and the gold and mix that with 45 grams of Floetrol and then added enough water to get the consistency I wanted. The Extreme Sheens, I only used about 25 grams of Extreme Sheen, 25 grams of Floetrol and just a touch of water. Clear as mud? Anyway, let's get started. Okay, here we are, ready to start. Um, I'll just show you the consistency of the paints that I've got here today. Now, they're not water thin, but they're thin enough so when I like drip, drizzle it off the spoon, I only get a tiny, tiny little, little mound. And if I do a little twirly shape, the paint bump only stays on the surface like for half a second or so. So it's not water thin, but it, it's pretty thin. If your paint is too thick, you're not going to be able to blow it across your canvas with the blow dryer, or it'd be really difficult. All right, so I've got my colors ready. So most of my colors are the, the red, yellow, and um, orange. This is the gold I'm putting in the, in the center. And then these are my two extreme sheen metallics that I'm going to use. Now I'm not, this. This time with the starburst, I'm not putting the, the star right in, in the middle. I'll offset it a little bit. I think that'll look, look uh, perhaps a little bit more interesting in the painting. So oh, where will I put it? This side or that side doesn't really matter. I might put it 
down here somewhere and then do the rings out from that. You'll see what I what I mean in a bit. Okay, so where will I put it? Maybe maybe here. Okay, so that's my center. I always have paint left over when I mix it up for the center, but that doesn't matter. Now, I'll put a little ring of yellow. Touch more here. A bit of yellow there. And then I'll do some of my metallic gold. So uh, red. Um, then I'll do some of the yellow again. I'm not going to put the silver in a ring. You'll see what I'll do with the silver in a little bit. See how nice and thin it is? Um, oh, this is the extreme sheen. Make sure I use the, the right one. Extreme sheen. And then it was time for the orange again. some of the red. So it looks as though I'm using heaps, heaps of paint, but in comparison to other techniques, it's not really a huge amount of paint. So I'm not using a base layer at all. My normal Dutch pores use a base layer. But yeah, there's none on this one. And what was next yellow? Uh, I'll do a bit up here. of that will get blown off the corner. Yellow. Got some of the extreme sheen left. A little drizzle there. A bit more there. A little bit up here. 
here. Oh, got a few drips left, I'll save. And then, what was next? Orange. A little bit like there. Oh, a little bit there. Red, won't put any more up there. Red, yellow. I made up enough paint this time. Um, yellow, a little bit of gold left, not much. That's the token amount. Gold, um, orange, you know. Oh, three drops left. Red. I'll put a bit up there. colors used apart from my silver. Now I don't want to go overboard with the silver but I do want to put like little streaks through. I could have used white, but white and red make pink, and I, I didn't really want lots of pink, and I thought I'd be a bit safer using the silver instead of white. But we'll see when I pour it out. Okay, you think that'll look nice? And most of this silver may disappear. I'll just put a little bit more on in case it disappears. What a nice, bright, sunny picture today. Now, don't be afraid if you mix up too much paint. You can just put a bit of glad, uh, wrap, plastic wrap over the top and it, it'll keep for ages. Just use it in another painting. Cool, I use almost everything, I'm pleased. Let's put these aside so I don't knock it all over with my blow dryer. Bit of that gold left still. Okay, now 
The blow dryer I'm using today has one of these sort of wide edges to it. Um, and I'm using the lowest fan setting and I'm using a oh, lowest cool setting, the lowest fan setting and the cool button. I can always increase the fan speed if the paint doesn't move enough, but I'll, I'll keep it on low for, for now. And I'll start in the center and just go outwards. We're not getting to the edge, so I'll increase the speed. That's what you don't do. Drag your cord through the paint. Okay. That's, that looks reasonably interesting, I think. Now I'll give it a bit of a, a low torch. I think that's cooked enough. Right, the, the heat just helps bring the extreme sheen metallics to the surface to enable them to do what they do. Oh, it's almost wrecked that part of the painting, but I think it I think it's fine. Well, that looks really, really lovely. Now, the last thing you need to do is to go around the edges and to wipe off any drips. The drips look ugly and they also pull paint off your canvas. Uh, 
Okay, what I might do next time when I do one of these again is be careful not to put as much paint in the middle and put a bit more around the outside. I think that may help me blow the paint a little bit better to the, the very corners. So I don't like using that super high setting because it's like blows the paint everywhere. I've got a bit more control when I use the, the lower fan setting. That, whatever works best for you really. just enough of the silver to make it interesting. My centre, I lost a bit of the circle, but a little bit here and a little bit there. I think it was because of that extra high fan setting. It blew the paint a little bit more than I wanted to. It will tend to go back towards the middle again, because uh, um, um, the weight of the paint will take it there. So that, that middle part will, will shrink a little bit as it all settles and dries. But it's a, it's a lovely bright painting, that's for sure, which is what I was going for. see if I can like dribble some paint over these corners. I managed to cover just about everything except the corners but I'll just dribble a bit of paint there and then it, it all blends in properly even though it doesn't really matter I did pre-paint as I said those edges pick up a bit of paint with a palette knife and let it just dribble down. Yeah, I think that's everything covered. Now you may need to scrape the edges a couple of times before you're all done, particularly if the paint is thick. This is quite runny, but if it's, if it's thick, you'll need to do that a, a couple of times, perhaps, before it stops dripping. The Extreme Sheen Gold is just very glittery, very glittery and lovely in this one. As I thought, most of the silver disappeared, but we kept enough of it to make it look nice and hardly any pink. Okay. I'll just finish this and then I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so I'm holding the camera above my head. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm bringing you down. You can see this is my center. I would have liked it to be more, more round, but yeah, there's, there's nothing I can do about that. I do like the little effects of the yellow around the middle of the center. Now my camera isn't really showing that as gold. It is gold. The colors are a bit muted in the camera. That gives you an idea of how it looks. A bit brighter in real life than in the camera. But we've certainly got some beautiful effects. The extreme sheens is what gives all those lovely effects in the paint. That's where I almost wrecked it. Canvas is a little bit bare there, but I didn't want to like blow it again.
So what did you think? I think it turned out rather nice, despite the fact I dangled the electrical cord across the canvas and I didn't get my perfectly circular centre in the canvas. I think the overall effect is just lovely. The metallics will look really nice when they're dried and varnished. Um, perhaps that's a technique you'd like to have a go at yourself. Not that difficult, provided that you keep the, the paint thin and um, you have enough on the canvas to blow right across the canvas with your blow dryer. Okay, time for me to clean up and time for me now to say goodbye. As usual, if you like what you saw today, please uh, take a moment to press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a moment to subscribe. So I hope you have a great week ahead and I look forward to seeing you again next time. So happy painting!